Hey guys, Mike from the Off Grid Shop here. I want to show you today on how easy it is to install one of our pre-wired boards and get power going. So pretty much how it turns up, you're going to turn up with this here on a pallet. We leave these timbers on here to actually make it really easy that I wouldn't recommend doing this by yourself. I'd highly recommend grab two people to make it easier. But if you really want to and you're a physically strong person, you can lift this up and snap this for yourself. So yeah, put some screws in. We've used a trusty tie down here to be able to do that. So for this demonstration purpose. Now, once you've done that, you've got your batteries. Now the batteries are pretty simple. They come with these anthenol plugs, which we just actually plug into the battery. Once that's plugged on the battery, you just flick on the circuit breaker on your battery. What's gonna happen when we get some power gum? Now with the batteries, we ship them about half full. A lot of the time we get them here in the shop, we do cycle people's systems and we unpackage the battery out of the box and we put it on and we put a bit of charge and stuff like that into it. We do try to ship them half full because the fuller they are, the more dangerous they are when they ship. But we don't need to rock up with flat batteries. So once you've plugged your battery in, your little screen's gonna start coming and it's gonna switch on to how much actually energy is in your battery. Now this is a point I'd highly recommend, either if you haven't done your solar panels already, just grab your generator cord. In this situation, it's just a 15 amp cord. We're actually just gonna be using the grid because we're based in the shop here. Then you just plug it into the caravan input. Now, once it's plugged into the caravan input, I'd recommend turn your inverter on. Now your inverter's gonna fire up once your battery and stuff's connected. Now this caravan input won't come on until you actually turn on the circuit breaker. Once you turn the circuit breaker, it's gonna wait a minute, you're gonna hear a clonk. Now that's in there for safety. So the minute you pull this out, the contactor opens, because that contactor is designed in there that if it doesn't sense any voltage down here, the contactor won't close. So it's important for a safety point of view. So that means these terminals down here don't become live. Now, once you plug your generator in, you'll actually see on the board here. So on your touch screen here, what you're gonna see is actually it's gonna be blank. Now, because we've unplugged this again, we're gonna wait for the contact to shut again. Once the contact shuts, there we go, the contact is shut. Now the Victron's actually accepting input. You see the generator at the moment is on 175 watts. 350, so you're gonna see the input that's coming in from your generator, how much it's actually going up by. Now these are normally set not to go any higher than a certain wattage to protect your generator. If you do have a really small generator, and also these caravan plugs can only handle 15 amps. If you do want more than that, there are other plugs out there that can have put on the board. If you do have a bigger generator, there's different plugs that you can have, and all really depends whether you'll make your generator portable or not. But it just depends on your situation, let us know. If you want to put a bigger generator on and make it portable, or you just want the ability to be able to hard it on the back of the board, we can make that happen as well. So you can see now, th th this is pulling 3,000 watts, and you see the 3,000 watts is coming from the generator, going down through the inverter, into the batteries as there's no load. Now watch, when I turn a load on, we're gonna show what happens. We're gonna get an oven in here. If you can see here, the generator's doing 3,400 watts, and the turbo oven's pulling 1100 watts. And as you can see that only 2100 watts is going to the battery. So the 1000 watts is going to the turbo oven. And we're only taking three and a half thousand from your generator and the other 2000 go to the battery. Now what happens when I turn the tur turbo oven off? As you can see that full charge coming in from the generator goes directly to your battery. So if you think about that, that's really important to get. And 3000 through one of these caravan plugs, that's the biggest you can go, you actually can't go any larger. If you want a bigger generator, you're gonna want a different infrastructure to wire this in. Now the other thing to think about and consider is that when it's raining and it's wet, if you wanna charge your batteries and you wanna run big loads at the same time, the more loads that you're running, the less it's gonna go into batteries. It's really important to think of when you're designing your system that you don't wanna undersize your generator and end up going, well, hey, it's raining, I wanna heat my hot water, I wanna cook with electricity, and I wanna do it from two KVA Honda. It's just not gonna happen. So just really think about that sort of stuff when you're designing. And in those situations, because a lot of these systems, everything works fine as long as the sun's shining. 
and it's until the sun's not shining is when everything shows its ugly face. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. These boards, you just stand them up, you can plug them in, you connect your battery up, and straight away, you put your generator on, a couple of hours running the generator, you can get by. Now the reality is, depending how much energy you use, now this is a four kilowatt hour battery. Now as an example, when I took my house off grid in Sydney for the first time, I was using about six kilowatt hours for the whole day. Now, this charge and this generator running right now would take about just under an hour to charge this battery full. So the reality is, you could run a generator for two hours a day, couple, you know, say for 45 minutes in the morning, charge the battery up. Then of an afternoon, you could run it for another 45 minutes to top it back up to get you through the night. And you wouldn't actually need solar panels. So it's really quick and easy to do these things. I actually know a lot of people actually have these systems that just use generators. I know a guy that does it with generators who runs cool rooms. He's never ever installed solar and he's done the numbers and he reckons it's actually cheaper the way he does it with these generators and having solar. So it's really quick and easy to get power set up at a place for a weekend from a little Honda 2 kVA generator and also sleep at night. So just think about that when you're doing everything. And for more information on about how to get these pre-wired boards, if you want custom made, in the description in the link below, there's been some links to our website and a few other DIY kits we've done that you can see how easy it is to get power in your weekender. Thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day.